As I work with more and more schools, the topic of how we engage our remote learners always comes up. That and time, but let's focus on engaging remote learners. You know, it's not an easy task. And even when we think the kids are there, they're ghosting, meaning they log on to their Zoom or Google Meet and then their camera's off, they're not there. So as we think about engagement, there are six strategies that we can implement that will help with engagement. There's nothing foolproof, everyone, but let's start. Number one, relevance. You know, if kids don't see the purpose in their learning, they don't understand the why and how they will use it, chances are they're not going to be engaged. So in the beginning part of our lessons, we really need to focus on how do we engage? How do we connect something to that that resonates with them? And how do we set the stage for active involvement later on? Uh, Number two, discourse. You know, kids don't want to just be spoken at. Neither do we. And when we think about our remote learners, if they're just watching the lesson, um, whether uh, it's full remote or hybrid environment, chances are they might not be that engaged. So as we think about discourse, utilizing technology such as breakout rooms in Zoom, Google Meets, or a whole slew of tools, uh, Mentimeter, Padlet, Answer Garden, Go Soapbox, uh, those are just a few to get kids talking both through live video or more through chat-like features. Number three, collaboration. We want to get kids talking, but the key to engagement and eventually empowerment is to get kids to collaborate and through cooperative learning activities. You know, this creates uh, positive interdependence, think, pair, share, turn and talk, jigsaw, uh, station rotation, uh, brainstorming. All of those strategies worked before the pandemic and can work right now when you utilize breakout rooms in conjunction with a digital tool. Uh, Number four, uh, flexibility. You know, as we think about uh, the pandemic and all the challenges, the opportunities is it's enabled us to take a critical lens to move away from the rigid nature of in-person schooling. So utilizing more high agency strategies uh, to get kids to do the work asynchronously could be a way to engage. Number five, personalization. And when I talk about personalization, I'm not saying put all kids on a device at the same time and have them use an adaptive learning tool. I'm thinking about, again, those high agency uh, strategies, voice, choice, path, pace, place, shifting from the what we teach, what's in the curriculum, what's on the test to the who to emphasize ownership of learning. Specific strategies include station rotation, choice boards, playlists, the flipped classroom, self-paced activities that really focus, again, getting kids not just engaged, but empowering them to think and apply their thinking in meaningful ways. And number six, feedback. You know, if kids know that they're just going to log on to uh, a synchronous or asynchronous lesson and they're not going to be given any feedback, chances are they might not be as engaged. And, you know, kids want to know how they're progressing. You know, what can they do to improve? They want practical uh, pieces of information that are going to help them with their learning. So again, quick rundown in terms of strategies that we can use in a variety of different ways. Number one, relevance. Number two, discourse. Number three, collaboration through cooperative learning. Four, flexible tasks and environments. Five, personalization. And six, feedback. Keep up the great work, everybody.